Ivan, we're taking it back to basics. How to wash your car with just a hose. Hi, I'm Ivan. I'm Nick. This is DIY Detail. Today, we're going back old school. We're in a very old school building. This is our new studio that will eventually be built out, but we just literally moved from the other one to this one just to get videos ready for you guys. How to wash your car with just a hose. We only have the basics, and that's what we wanted to really tap into to help you know right. how to safely wash your car. Yeah, you don't need the pressure washer. You don't need all sorts of stuff like the foam cannon. It's fun to have, and yes, it actually is a little safer, but we're gonna show you the safest way to do it without all those tools. Now, the car is arguably not exactly clean, which is a good thing. We wanna show you cleaning your car. And we have two buckets in front of us. Now, we normally are foam rinse foam, but no foam cannon, meaning we can't do foam first. Yeah, if you wanna know what the foam rinse foam method is, you foam the vehicle up first. Those luxurious suds, right? Right. You let it dwell and then you pressure wash off. And what that does is it removes a lot of the traffic film. And then you foam again, you have yeah. more lubrication. You take your wash mitt in your bucket of incredible suds and you're just going after the, the grit, really. It's a very yeah. safe way to do it. But with less stuff here, we're gonna show you the bare bones method. Right, so we have a hose, we have buckets that already have water in them. And the traditional two bucket method, the rinse bucket as people call it, they don't put soap in it, which to me is a big mistake. Incredible Suds has a lot of emulsifiers and lubrication in it that we want that as much as possible in our wash medium. And with it in our rinse bucket, it's actually going to draw the dirt out of the wash media a lot faster than just a bucket of water. Could you go ahead and fill the buckets up and explain what the premise of the two bucket method, which we normally say you don't need, what, what the premise is and why we're actually doing it today. Right, so since we can't do a foam rinse foam, we need to have some way of getting the grit off the vehicle and also off our wash media. So the car is gritty and I'm putting one cap full in each bucket. That's all you really need. So a half ounce of incredible suds. Yeah, half, ounce, half ounce of incredible suds. That's all you need. It smells so good. Yeah, it's gonna be giving us a lot of luxurious foam here. And if, then, if, if you want to do an ounce or more, you can. Yeah, but have fun at home, but I've been trying to save you money. Right, it's not necessary. Then we're gonna we'll put on a jet setting here. There we go. So you've seen us do this before with the foam cannon. Now we're doing it with the incredible sets. That's our rinse bucket. Now it has the grit guard wall on it. So when we're putting the bucket in, we don't have to go all the way to the bottom. The, the mid end. Yeah, bucket. when we're putting the mid in, we don't have to go all the way to the bottom to find a grit guard. We can just do it on the sides. And then in our wash bucket. So you can see all the foam we're getting immediately. From just a half an ounce of incredible suds. Yeah, just half an ounce. Folks, this is why it's the best car shampoo on the planet. Right, now we need to rinse the vehicle. And I'm gonna put this back on the shower setting. I was gonna ask, does it matter what setting for the rinse and why? Right, we don't want high pressure. We don't want to be forcing the dirt onto the vehicle. What we wanna do is gently get the dirt off the vehicle. Now, this car has our stack on it, meaning that it beads like crazy, but at the same time, it's taking the dirt off. Now on the sides, we drove through heavy, heavy salt roads, snow to get here and the car was actually not driven, it was behind the bus. Meaning that we have some salt on the sides, but once we hit it with the, the wash mitt, it'll be fine. So we rinse from the top down. Now I noticed you kind of hit this panel and then you hit the top. I mean, it, it's right. not an exact science, but you're kind of no, starting right. here and then you're gonna go down. I just wanted to show the beading since I had been talking about that. Okay. So on the sides, as we can see, we've got very little beading that's because we have all that salt on there. And we can rinse a lot, and if we were to rinse for half an hour or so, we'd eventually wear that salt off. But that's not what we're here for. It's a waste of water and time, right? Yeah. Ooh, the beading looks great on this car, Ivan. In some areas, it does. Yeah, up here, up top. Yeah, on the top where we have no salt accumulation, the beading is spectacular. Well, I will also tell you, you're gonna get beating back after you wash, after you potentially decontaminate, after 
a long winter of driving, uh, you use some water spot remover. We're not gonna showcase that in this wash, but there are other things you can do. And if you're curious, how do I restore beading on my ceramic coated vehicle? There's a link in the description below on how to deep dive, deeply wash, decontaminate, and restore the beading of your vehicle. Uh, that video, our YouTube video, is posted in the link below. How goes it, Ivan? Good. So obviously a little slower than with a pressure washer. Ivan, speaking of back to basics, if you're in your own home garage, yeah. you're gonna wanna squeegee quite a bit, right? We do have a drain below us, but we get it. You're at home, you don't have anything fancy. Either this is in your driveway, and if so, do it out of direct sunlight. I always recommend that. Uh, but if you're in your, in your garage, you don't have a drain, uh, a nice floor squeegee is a great thing to have. There's really no need for me to do this right now. I just wanted to feel like I was uh, useful. Well, and it's also nice not to be walking in water. So I'm taking a few, care of you, Evan. A few seconds to have the squeegee is a helpful thing. Now, we have the two bucket method. We have a taller bucket and a shorter bucket, and that really helps. And if you can have two color buckets, that's gonna help you as well. And the reason for that is to know which one is the rinse bucket, which one is the wash bucket. So this being our wash bucket, we'll take our wash media out of here. And here you go, Nick. All right and you want that wash media nice and wet. And we start with the top. And then we work our way down the side of the vehicle. Should I stick with you on that side or no, go just, off on yeah, my own adventure? Yeah, do the, the top. Okay. So the top and the windows. Okay. With, with the same side, yeah? Yeah. Well, you can flip the... Oh, am I going around with you here? Okay. Yeah. Sometimes for videos, it gets a little bit, you gotta coordinate, you gotta choreograph. Yeah. All right. I've got now, the top glass here. Yeah, so now that we have the top or the roof of the car and the windows done, we go back to our rinse bucket, which is the tall one, and we wanna get the grit off of here, so we're actually gonna rub it up against the grit guards on the side. Squeeze it out, because we want to get all that grit and dirt off of it, and then back to our wash bucket to pick up some luxurious lather. We've criticized this method or pointed out some of the flaws in it, um, you know, in a podcast, and I'll put a link to that below as well of, you know, why the two bucket method is dead, and that's because we prefer the pre-treatment and, and all the value that foaming, rinsing, foaming, and then contact wash brings. Yeah. Um, people out there are gonna ask, and you do wanna have grit guards in both of these, What's happening in this rinse bucket? Like, is it actually releasing a lot of dirt? Is it actually working? It's doing a fair amount. And again, that's where the grit guard really comes into play by rubbing this wash media up against it. Uh, what would you like me to do back here? So do that back fender. Okay. And when you get close to the bottom, flip your, your wash media. I just wasn't sure if we were gonna skip the lowers till the end, you know, sometimes we do that. Well, you can. But I like the safety of just half a panel with one side, lowers with the other, and then rinse bucket. Yeah, exactly. And why are we doing that, Ivan? It's dirtier on the bottom, right? Right, it's dirtier on the bottom. It's for additional safety. Now in this case, the door is relatively long on here. So I'm gonna do the top half of the door. Then come back, rinse, and dump. Ivan, I think if I did this, I mean, I feel how slick this is, I know it's totally safe, but I'm a visual guy. Yeah. I want even more suds. I'm gonna go an ounce in each bucket and waste my money and product just for the visual. I think the more suds you have, the, the more it feels like you're cleaning. But the truth is, I think my eyes are deceiving me. Right, because you're... I think I'm just used to foaming the car and seeing more on the so surface because of the foam that we put on there. Exactly, and if we put more incredible suds in the bucket, we're actually not gonna be carrying more suds to the car. It's just we're gonna have a, a thicker amount in the bucket. Ivan, mean, you know I'm a man of the people. People are gonna think these things. So I bring them up and then, yeah. then you tell me whether I'm right or wrong. I guess I, I kind of talked myself into that one. But Now, the other thing that doing the top has done for us is when we're doing the tops and working our way down, the incredible suds is flowing its way down the vehicle, carrying some of that dirt with it. This rinse bucket is actually getting dirty. I mean, I can see it. 
And so visually, you're going to see a dirtier rinse bucket. Hopefully, your wash bucket isn't as dirty and think, well, maybe this method's working. Well, it does work. And you know the, the reason I put the Incredible Suds in the rinse bucket is to actually let it do its job and get that dirt off the vehicle and off the wash media before we put it in the other bucket. Flipping often. Don't be afraid to flip halfway through the panel, hit the lowers, and then dunk in your rinse bucket. Yeah. So now we just have the front and back bumper to do. Uh, back bumper is done, sir. Okay, so just the front bumper and the wash is done. I'll let you uh, take the honors. Now from there, we want to rinse the vehicle properly. So I'm gonna start with the roof and work my way down. And we want to, as much as possible, flood the surface. Are you on a shower setting is what it sounds like? Yeah, so the shower setting works well for that because now we have a lot of water and it's carrying that water off the surface. Is this how you wash your car at home? Or what is your preferred method? Do you believe in two buckets? Is the two bucket method dead? Leave a comment below, let us know what you think. We respond to all of your YouTube comments. Yeah, and Nick, you know, before we did this, I actually uh, asked someone that does this type of wash more often than I have, because in the last 40 years, this is the first time I've washed a car this way. Well, we've never done it this way, so I had to be like, are you serious? Yeah. We, we, we debated on whether to use the, the foam lance that you can attach to a hose. Right. But we wanted to really meet you where you are, which is quite possibly a brand new detailer. Someone who has nothing at home wants to buy a bottle of car shampoo like Incredible Suds and get results, right? Exactly. And so this is what this video is all about. If you want a different watch video, we have dozens of them. This is just, it felt very thematically aligned with our new garage, our new old garage. Yeah. Now, Nick, we're gonna do something here. I know we want to use the least amount of products possible. You can't help yourself though, huh? Well, we have them here, so. But you'll notice that, especially under the mirror here, the water is just slowly sheeting away. And that's behind the front, behind the front wheel and up to about there, the water is not really behaving the way I know that it can behave on this vehicle. That's because of all that salt accumulation. So I'll be back in a second with some water spot remover. Great job with the squeegee, Nick. Thank you. And I have the water spot remover here and the water spot remover, just making sure the lid is on there tight. We see that that water, especially under the mirror, is just sitting there, it's not doing anything. That's where just a little bit, we don't need a lot, and we're just gonna let it dwell a couple seconds. Now, interestingly, on the other side of the vehicle, the beating's pretty good. And the reason for that, going down the highway, is just this side, we get passed by a lot of trucks. We're not the fastest ones on the road. We get passed by a lot of vehicles and trucks throwing the spray up onto the vehicle, and that's where we're getting that. Once we let it sit for a couple seconds. There we go, the beating is back. Water spot remover is great for that. Yeah. Some people might wonder how it works. Is it a pH thing or why, you know, is, is road salt alkaline or? Road salt is alkaline and the water spot remover is a little acidic, but it's not just the pH value that does the job. It is the chemical reaction. So you could put something that has a very, that's very acidic. Uh, example, Coca-Cola on there, it's not gonna do a thing. And most soda pops, you know, or sodas or colas or however you want to call them, are a pH of two to three, which is actually lower than our water spot remover. So it's a more complex discussion than just pH as to why our water spot remover neutralizes the salt and restores the water beating. Exactly. And saying neutralizing the salt might even be it's, oversimplification. Right, because it's minerals that we're going after. And if you're the type of person that actually washes your car and then uses a blower, you're getting an accumulation of minerals on your vehicle every time by not using a towel. So we'll be using a towel. 
And the one thing that's extremely important, and one of the reasons I always say a rinseless wash is safer, because the rinseless wash leaves something on the vehicle. Now all we have on this vehicle is tap water. Well, I want to clarify this if folks at home are a little confused. Yeah. Rinseless means you don't rinse at the end. Exactly. You do pre-treat if you have the right chemicals and tools, and if I can spray on rinseless, then pressure wash it off, then spray it on again and do my contact wash. We're always going to condone the foam rinse foam or the spray rinse yeah. spray with rinseless. But you don't have to do that final rinse at the end after you've done your contact wash. Notice how we did the final rinse after our Incredible Suds wash because Incredible Suds doesn't leave that lubrication behind in the, in the same way that rinseless would. Right. And since I have a hose in my hand, I'm going to use Quick Beads. Quick Beads is a phenomenal drying aid and it helps in drying in two ways. One, it provides the lubrication that we want for the safety, so think of it as a drying lubricant, but also as a drying aid, that aid aspect of it is that it's helping us dry the vehicle. So there'll actually be less standing water on the vehicle once I've applied the Quick Beads. And to apply the Quick Beads, we want to shake it up. We want to make sure that everything is well emulsified in the bottle. This is one of the only chemicals that we need to be shaken up in our line. Then we missed on the quick beads. And you'll see as I'm misting it on that the water actually starts falling off the vehicle. Yeah, it's like it runs away. Yeah. And we're in a semi-controlled environment here, so I'm not too concerned about timing, but if you're working in your driveway in the sun, you want to be just a little faster. If you're in the sun, I like to do one panel at a time. Yeah. One panel and then at a time. we're not going to rinse down the vehicle. We're going to activate it by going up. So the activation by going up is as simple as we turn our water on again, and now I'm going up, not going down. And you'll see sort of a frothy look to it. That frothy look, we want to keep rinsing until it's gone. So I'm pushing the, the quick beads from front to back. And I sprayed some on the roof, so I'm going to spray from one side of the vehicle to the other. And then just as a safety, we're going to rinse down to make sure there's no leftover quick beads on the surface. And there you go, folks. That is Quick Beads 101. It is that simple. Right. You just don't want to let it dwell too long and you don't want to use too much product. That's why I like the control of less dwell time, yeah. less surface area at a time. Quick Beads activates right away. Right. So a little more dwell time might get you a little more longevity or slickness. I, I can't guarantee that, but I can tell you that the people who've had any issues with this have put way too much on, on way too much vehicle at a time. Yeah. And if we flood the surface with water, so we have a little bit too much pressure here, but if we flood it, it basically it dries the vehicle. It works a lot better when you have more control, don't have much control here, so. We have a hose, that's it. Yeah, we have a hose. Now, I'm gonna do the other side of the vehicle, and Nick, you can start drying. Now, a lot of you are saying, wait a minute, you told us not to dry just with the tap water on there. Well, we have more than the tap water. We have the quick beads there. We don't need additional lubrication. If we want to, we can, but we're not gonna do that today. Some might ask, what is this on the paint? Is it, is it water beads infused with quick beads, or what, what, are they, what are they looking at? So, quick beads, yeah, the, what's left on the paint is there is the, the freshly applied quick beads that's giving us that lubrication, and there's still some on the surface. Boy, that dries easy, Ivan. We get the back end here because we didn't do anything with the quick beads there. And you've already hit the roof, correct? So I can, I can do that as well? Yeah, the roof okay. is done. So the hood and the front bumper, I'm going to go from the bottom and force it up the hood. And for those of you watching from wow, the UK, the bonnet, actually UK, Australia, India. We have a rather international audience, which is a lot of fun. So let us know in the comments, where are you watching from?
So aptly, this was the last vehicle cleaned in our previous studio, and it's the first one cleaned in our new studio. Those beads are rather spectacular. Now, Nick, I noticed you're struggling just a little bit with that towel. Yeah, the waffle, uh, it absorbs quite a bit, but it, it, it's gotten pretty wet, so I'm just wringing it out a little bit. Right, let me give you a little tip, okay? Back in a second. We had a lot of standing water on the vehicle. We're gonna use our standard edgeless buffing towel, and you're gonna do a two-handed drying method, meaning that this first towel is gonna pick up the majority of the water. It's gonna act like a squeegee. We have it folded for better, uh, better protection, and then your drying towel just has to get that little film that's left. So not the, not the opposite? No, so the, this first one is the one that's getting all that moisture off. The second one just has to deal with the, the final wipe. Okay, let's see it. And we have to put water back on the vehicle it, if you no, want it's to. No, pretty, it's pretty good. I mean, I think the towel got most of the, the vehicle's yeah. water. It just, it, it felt very saturated at that point. So let me add a little, Add a little more water here. All right, now that's the beading you're gonna see with quick beads, guys. Yeah, that's incredible. And a coated car. Right, this has the stack on it, so can't get better than that. That's our eight-year coating, followed by our three-year coating. You have a application time after the eight-year coating, between two to eight hours is when you wanna apply that three-year coating. If you wanna know more about the stack, guess what? Link in the comments. There you go. So basically you do your first little wipe with this and this towel is gonna get soaked. This is the one that you wring out quick, quickly and often and then that one just has to get that last little film off the surface. How often would I be using that? I mean that would get real wet real quick. Yeah, and you and just keep wringing out. It's, okay, and that one takes the brunt of all the water and then this one is my final dry. Right, and this just is acting as a squeegee at this point. And by a squeegee, I mean a squeegee pushes stuff around, yeah? Right, and it's pushing some of the water off the surface. It's absorbing some. We're not looking for a super absorbent towel at this point, even though this is a really absorbent towel. What okay. we're looking for is just to move the majority of the water off the surface, and then we come back with our drying towel and get the remainder off. So when would be a good time to use this method? I, I've probably used it on accident before, but never intentionally. Uh, anytime I'm doing a water wash like this, I like to use it because it saves my drying towel from doing a lot of work. And the other aspect, if you're using something like ceramic gloss as your drying aid, so ceramic gloss is going to somewhat deteriorate your towels over time. It accumulates in your towels. And we have ways of fixing that. Basically, as soon as you're done washing the car, put it in your wash bucket, let it sit for 15 minutes, the ceramic that's in ceramic gloss is gonna be broken down and it's not going to interfere with your towels. But if you forgot to do that, well, a semi-disposable towel, a less expensive towel like this is great for just getting the brunt of that. You're spreading the ceramic gloss with this one and then your drying towel is just getting the excess liquid off. We started with the two buckets, the same amount in them. This is our rinse bucket, this is our wash bucket. And let me get the uh, inserts out of here. So you can see just how grungy the water is in this one, which was our rinse bucket. And this is our wash bucket. Yes, it has a little bit in it, but not as much as that. One of the reasons for that is we use incredible suds in both buckets, half an ounce in each. It's not a lot of product in there, but enough that when we're putting our wash mitt in here, we're getting the action of the cleaning of the incredible suds, cleaning that wash mitt, making sure that when we go to our wash bucket, there's not a lot on there. Nick, I think that pretty much wraps it up. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, please leave them below. We love answering your questions. We love reading your comments. And Nick, is there another video they should be watching? Not one video, several videos. It's our Detailing 101 series, an amazing way to learn more about how to clean your car. Yeah.